Welcome back to Teal House Farm. We are deconstructing our master bedroom a bit to make room for the new baby that's coming in four or five weeks here. So I had a sewing table here where my oldest daughter did some sewing. I broke it down. It'll have to be put away for now. It will move the dog kennel over here to make room for the baby crib where the dog kennel is now. I am really minimalist when it comes to babies. Babies do not need much at all. They don't need a lot of things. They just need a little nook. And so we're going to get that nook set up, getting started today, and we're going to work on it for the rest of the week. And we'll kind of show you what we've got going on. Mr. Chocolate Face, Mr. P, can never keep his hand off the camera when I'm working on stuff. So he's going to go ahead and steal that for a second. We get it put back together. And this is right here in this corner is where the baby crib is going to go. I do have an actual wood crib, but it is upstairs. Patton still sleeps in it. We're going to work on transitioning him to a toddler bed. But for now, we're going to use a pack and play with the snap-on bassinet for the new baby. As cute as separate bassinets are, they really are kind of a waste of money and a waste of space because the baby is in them for such a short time. So this pack and play has a bassinet attachment and this works great. Okay, so here we are a few days later. I think I've come up with the plan here for storage. So we talk about this, or I talk about this a lot, but the house is old. There really aren't closets. There can't really store stuff in the basement. The shed's pretty small and half of it's got animals in it. So storage is a premium <laughs> at our house. And I don't need a lot of storage for the baby. I'm gonna show you stuff I have. I'm very minimalist when it comes to the baby, to new babies, very frugal. Babies really don't need very much stuff. I do need just a little bit of storage to be able to keep her clothes and diapers. Um, and so I'm here at the Family Dollar slash Dollar Tree. If you live in rural America, you'll know it's a staple of rural America, the double store. And uh, I want to see what they have as far as storage. I peeked around, these like storage baskets. I peeked around at Target and Walmart and everything was like at least 10 or $15. I don't want to spend that kind of money on like a storage box. So we're going to just peek around here, see what we can find. And then we're going to get home and we're going to get everything prepped for baby. Everything washed. We're going to strip diapers. We're, I'm going to show you everything that I have for baby to kind of give you some idea of what, what a more minimalist frugal baby, new baby setup looks like. Um, and we'll go from there. But let's see what we can find here without breaking the bank. I'm looking to spend maybe $10 total, not $10 on one basket. So I think the family dollars or the slash Dollar Tree is going to be the place for that. Well, it was a complete strikeout as far as storage containers went. The only ones that they had were still seven or eight dollars. I know that I've bought collapsible cloth storage containers, which is what I wanted at the Dollar Tree before. They did not have them here though. I think I can make do with what I've got at home. I did pick up a couple things for school. The girls needed new folders and um, I also got these super cute. Isla still seems to feel like she needs to wear her sandals everywhere and it's getting way too cold for that. So I got her these cute little boots too. They had those. So hopefully convince her that she doesn't need to wear flip flops. But as far as containers for the new baby and some diapers and things like that, it was a, it was a total strikeout. There wasn't anything, anything along that. There were like two containers there. They were not collapsible. And like I said, they were still just as expensive as they are at Walmart. So, but I, I think we can make it work. So let's head home and the big girls want to help me because they're really excited about the baby. We'll get everything all sorted. Okay, so behind me is the mess that is the baby stuff that needs to be taken care of. This is what we're going to do today, and the girls want to help because they're really excited for the baby. I've just been stacking things until I could get around to it, so it's just everywhere. And some of this we don't need anymore. Um, it's just a mess. So we're going to get this all organized today and get all of our baby stuff prepped and show you what we need. Let's get it all pulled out on the table so we can figure out what needs washed, what diapers need stripped, what diapers we aren't going to keep, all that kind of stuff. Get it all out on the table. The first thing we do is we go through the clothes and we cut off any tags. So I did not save any clothes since the last baby was a boy and all of my sisters-in-laws had girls at the same time. So I handed down all the newborn and little baby clothes I had for girls. So we needed to buy new ones. I got all of these at a second chance shop. So most of these were 50 cents or a dollar. And then we had several that viewers sent us as well. So I have sizes from newborn up to six months here on the table. So it's not actually a ton of clothes, but baby doesn't need a whole lot of options. She's not gonna be a fashionista. It's just important that she's warm and comfy. Micah helps me get those tags off and the clothes kind of sorted. I fold up the receiving blankets. I only keep about five. That's really all you need just for spit ups and for keeping baby a little warm in the car seat. 
After we get everything organized, we're gonna go ahead and put all the newborn sizes in these baskets I already had at home. This is what I wanted to use those collapsible bins for, but they didn't have them at the Dollar Tree, so these baskets will be fine. I do one basket of onesies and pants and one basket of sleepers and everything else that's bigger than newborn goes in that cardboard box for when the baby grows into it. Next up, we're gonna work on the diapers. I have way too many diapers. And a lot of these are pretty beat up. Some diapers I've used for all seven or soon to be seven children. So we need to sort and we need to demote some diapers to cleaning rags. So the girls help me sort into piles so we can see what we have and make choices. Okay, so we have a lot of diapers. <laughs> Too many. I've got, uh, these are fitted. So you have to put diaper cover over that. These are inserts for pocket diapers. These are covers for pre-folds, flats, and fitteds. Pile of pre-folds, wet bags. Got some wipes. We have a ton more wipes, but they're in the wipes container. And lots of flats. I use flats on newborns because A, I have a lot of them, B, they wash really easily and uh, dry really quickly outside or in the dryer and uh, so we're gonna keep all they're those. super cheap. So even though that's a ton, we're going to keep most of those because the newborns, a lot of people don't think about this, but when you cloth diaper a newborn, you are going to change a ton of diapers because their bladders are so tiny, they pee like every 30 minutes <laughs> and in a cloth diaper, wet is wet and it's uncomfortable um, in a... Um, a disposable diaper sometimes they could pee more than once before that little blue streak even lights up on the diaper and you know and you're gonna realize how much your baby is peeing when they're in a cloth diaper um, something to keep in mind if you think about cloth diapering and you want to start from a newborn is that you will change many more diapers on a newborn with cloth diapers than you would if they were in disposables I also do not buy newborn sized diapers it is not worth it in my opinion I just use flats from the very beginning and if you're curious about how I fold a flat on a newborn I have a video about it I'll link it below so even though that's a ton, we're gonna keep them for now. And when the baby is somewhere around 11 or 12 pounds, the other types of diapers start fitting really well. And then I will probably take about half of my flats and downgrade them to cleaning rags. Um, as far as the pre-folds go, we're gonna get rid of any that have holes or destroyed because we have some that are pretty ripped up. And then some of the older ones will also turn into cleaning rags and we'll keep a handful of those too because I like those. These are really worn out. The elastics are all stretched. Um, I still sometimes use them on Pat, but they are not going to fit well on a newborn. I think I'm just going to get rid of these because, like I said, they've, they've been through, I think these have been through five babies. So <laughs> if you're looking for this kind of diaper, that's the brand to buy. These have been through five babies and I still use them sometimes. But like I said, the elastics are super stretched out. So you have to make sure your cover is on perfectly. It's going to be hard to do on a newborn and I just have plenty of diapers. So I think I'm going to get rid of those. We're going to stuff our pocket diapers and then see what's left of these. I have microfiber inserts, cotton inserts, bamboo inserts, and these are liners, diaper liners, um, that just prevent some of the moisture from going through on your flat diapers. Um, they just kind of keep the baby feeling a little bit drier. I have way too many covers, so we're going to go through and get rid of any ones that are really stretched out. You can see that there's no elastic left in this but um, some of them are still really good. Like this one here is nice elastic still. So we'll keep that. And the pocket diapers are newer. I bought them for Pat when he was a newborn. So these still have another baby's life left in them. So we'll just go ahead and stuff these and then we'll see how many diapers we end up with and see if we need to um, get it even smaller. Let's go. share a lot about my cloth diaper routine on the channel specifically because I've discovered that whenever I share about cloth diapers I get tons of haters in the comments and I get tired of dealing with it but I'm making this video specifically for people who are thinking about a more minimalist 
approach maybe uh, to having a new baby to show you really don't need like to buy a lot of stuff you don't you need hardly any stuff um, and I'm going to include the cloth diaper stuff in here just to show you that cloth diapers can be really quite simple so I'm stripping these diapers it's called stripping stripping I'm boiling them there's other ways to strip diapers there's a lot of bad information online and there's a lot of good information online and when you're first starting out it can be hard to decide what's best for you so I'm going to share what I do and before people jump all over me in the comments if somebody sees this um, I want just to remind everybody that I am having my seventh child I have cloth diapered all of my children my diapers usually last four or five children that includes my pockets which have elastic in them because I replaced the elastic and I think I have a video on how to do that too. So the method that I'm using is working well for me. My children do not get yeast diaper rashes. My diapers do not smell like a barnyard when they're even after they've been washed. Um, when it comes to stripping diapers, I only strip diapers in between children. So when I'm having a new baby, I go through this process called stripping just as like an extra prep for the diapers. Some people will tell you you need to strip diapers every three to four months. I disagree with that. If you're having problems with your diapers, like they aren't holding moisture, your baby is leaking out of them all the time, or they smell nasty when you take them after you've washed them and dried them, whether that's outside or if you use your dryer for your non-plastic diaper parts, um, that means that there's something wrong with your wash routine. Um, for me, my wash routine is a hot wash with soap. I'll show you. I make my own laundry soap. I have been washing diapers in my own laundry soap since my second baby, and I'll talk about that in a second. So this makes a lot of people cringe, but let me explain why this works for me. I have a portable washing machine. I cannot fit a full-size washing machine in the house because it was a farmhouse built before people thought about indoor washing machines. And a portable washing machine, it's a top loader, it uses a lot of water, and it basically works how a ringer washer works with a lot of agitation and then a rinse. And so soap, I have found, is a better solution for washing things for me than detergents. I used to buy, my first child bought expensive, uh, diaper friendly, you know, all in clear type, you know, cloth diaper detergents, and I felt like my diapers didn't get clean. This soap, I have never had a problem with, it works really well for me, but anyway, my routine is a hot, hottest wash my washer will give me with the laundry soap and the diapers. And then I do a hot rinse. I dry them outside on the line. If I really can't dry them outside on the line, like sometimes you're washing diapers and it's a really rainy day and you just can't wait anymore. I have an indoor drying rack that I put anything that has plastic or snaps or elastic in it on the drying rack. And then things that don't have those, like the inserts or the flat diapers can go in the dryer no dryer sheets that ruins absorbency that routine works well for me it might not work well for you depending on what type of washing machine you have i will tell you if you have a high efficiency washing machine you are going to have trouble washing diapers they might be really cool and trendy but they do not use enough water there are people who make buckets with plungers for washing diapers because they have a high efficiency washing machine and doesn't get their diapers clean that might be something you have to look at, but when it comes to washing diapers, you cannot be, uh, you, you got to use the water. But the idea is that we use a lot of diapers, like fill up the whole diaper pail, and then I wash a lot of diapers at one time. So I'm really being efficient with the water I, I'm using because I'm washing a lot at one time. So now for stripping the diapers, all I'm going to do is boil them in a big pot of water for four or five minutes. It does smell a little weird. If you have never boiled a linen before, I will tell you, it's not the best smell and it's not the diaper. It's any type of cotton, cotton, wet cotton, and you know, all the other things that these are made out of. It just smells weird. Just be prepared. You might want to uh, open a window or something if you don't like the smell, but we're going to boil them four or five minutes. I feel like that just kind of fluffs them back up and, and gives them a new life. And um, these have already been washed in my regular wash routine, so they're already clean. So we're just going to boil them. And then um, it's not a very nice day outside today. So I think I will put non-plastic parts uh, in the dryer to dry just so I can get them packed up and put away today. Um, we are not going to boil any of our covers because um, that will ruin the plastic on the cover of the PUL, which is the liner that is um, waterproof. 
So anything that I have that has that kind of material in it, if you need to strip or feel like you need to strip those, you can wash them with just a teeny bit of Dawn dish soap seems to do the trick. I'm just not going to do anything with those because like I said, I'm not having any smell or absorbency problems. This is just more of an extra prep to get ready for baby. And on these inserts, I do feel like boiling them every 18 months or two years kind of fluffs them back up and gets them back to their original state. So let's go ahead and do that and then we'll get everything put away and see how we're doing space wise in my room since that's where all the baby stuff has to go. Okay, we got it all done and sorted. Let me show you what we have of everything. So, ones, okay, good job. Onesies and pants, these are all the newborn size clothes. So I focused more on sleepers since this is a winter baby. And just a couple pairs of onesies and just neutral pants that match with any color. Um, but a newborn baby is gonna spend the majority of their time in a sleeper so that they're nice and warm. In the box, I have uh, extra diapers. Some, some people have handed me down some disposables. Most of these packages are open, which is totally fine. People that I know that have already had babies, and so there's some size ones, some newborns in here. We just keep them. We use disposables overnight and for trips outside of the house where we're going to be gone um, all day, or if the baby, you know, like goes into the nursery at church and they don't, I don't expect them to know how to use cloth diapers. So it's always good to have some of those. And the larger size clothes are in here. And we're just gonna keep this box in our room like that. This is actually a, just worked out perfectly. I just got a package in this box and I was like, oh, perfect. It's like a little treasure chest, so that's free. I have five receiving blankets. You really don't need that many. Um, we use them for, you know, spit ups and stuff like that, but you don't need a ton. So I just have five there in this little basket and that's gonna be plenty. I have my pocket diapers, which our two-year-old is still not quite potty trained or working on it, but he uses these almost exclusively. So these are basically for him right now. I have three wet bags for on the go. And three seems to work well for me because sometimes if we're going somewhere all day, but I'm gonna use cloth diapers either for the just the cost or just because I want to that day, I need to bring two wet bags because if, especially if the two-year-old is still not potty trained, that's a lot of cloth diapers, and so you're gonna need an extra wet bag. And then there's a reserve, in case you go somewhere two days in a row and didn't have time to do laundry. This is a wet bag liner for my diaper pail that's in the bathroom. I have two more of these, and I keep them in the bathroom, because that's where the diaper pail is, but that one was just washed. And as far as diapers for the newborn go, I have two dozen flat diapers, which are in here nice and folded. I have some of these flannel liners, which I really only use if I'm cloth diapering overnight or if somebody has like um, an upset tummy and we're having some kind of gross poops. I know that's a little graphic, but these help keep everything drier and happier. Um, and then I also have extra uh, inserts, which I use as doublers as the baby gets larger and the flat diapers need doubled on the inside to hold more liquid. And then there's also some pre-folds, which I also use as doublers for the flat diapers. And then several cute little covers for the flat diapers. You really only need two or three if you're just getting started. I have probably seven in there, um, but two or three will get you started great. But for newborn, you're going to need probably 24 flat diapers if you're cloth diapering exclusively, because like I said before, they pee all the time. And with a newborn, you are not gonna have as much time to do laundry as you think. So 24 diapers lets you do laundry somewhere between every other and every third day with one baby. And we're all put away. So baby girl clothes plus one package of half used newborn diapers that somebody gave me, ready to go. Cloth diapers are right there. I have a bunch, somebody uh, gave me a bunch of wipes for a baby shower uh, gift, which is very kind of them. So those are stacked there. This is my cloth wipe solution, pre-made. Pat's cloth diapers. I have some pre-wetted cloth diaper, cloth wipes and my dry wipes in here so that they're real easy to 
refill. I have my wet bags plus diaper rash cream just in case I need it. I actually usually just use A and D ointment. People scream about types of um, ointments that are safe as types of cloth diaper creams that are safe for cloth diapers. You want to stay away from desitin. I do have some desitin in there. If I ever need to use it for like just something really bad, then we'll put them in a disposable, but I rarely, rarely need it. If I do need just a touch of something, I either use a little bit of coconut oil or the A&D ointment with the cloth diaper. I've never had problems. Some people tell you not to do it, but that's what your grandmother used when she cloth diapered was A&D ointment. So I think it's just fine. I have my sewing stuff and the disposables for the two-year-old there. There's my breast pump, which I still need to just check and make sure I have everything. I like, I don't know if I have enough breast milk storage mags, so I'll need to check that later, but I, I can do that later. There's our uh, receiving blankets, easily accessible. I can't do anything about these boxes right now. These are Christmas presents that need to be wrapped, so they're just kind of stuck here because there's no other storage. But I've got the baby uh, bassinet all set up here in the corner, and I have a nice baby carrier to wear the baby when I want to. I have a baby Bjorn. I really recommend spending the extra money if you can to get something nice because you're gonna be using it a lot. And then the box of the extras is just right there underneath Sam's uh, go, go bag for work because a lot of times when he goes to work, he'll be gone for a couple days since he works in the city. He'll spend the night there. So he's got his, his duffel bag there ready to go. As far as other things that a baby needs, there really isn't, really isn't much of anything. Uh, like I got a car seat obviously and um, a stroller which is nice to have. And I mean, I don't have a lot of baby containers. The baby is either sleep in the bassinet or I'm wearing the baby, or I just put a, I have a couple nice quilted blankets that people have made me. And I have just lay those on the floor, like the thick baby blankets and the baby can kind of roll around and play on the floor. And the other kids love playing with the new baby. So that keeps them entertained. I um, might get a vibrating bouncy seat. Sometimes those are nice to have, but it's not really an, a necessary thing. You don't really need to spend money on that. Don't waste a lot of money on baby containers. They grow out of them so fast. And uh, babies just, they love to be held. And developmentally anyway, it is better for baby to be able to stretch and play, whether that's in a large bassinet like this one with some toys on it or on the floor interacting with siblings. That's where they get a lot of their muscle strength and start to lose those newborn reflexes. If they're in baby containers all the time, they're locked in and they don't develop those muscles. So really important to get your baby out, let them wiggle even when they're really little. Thanks so much for watching guys. We will see you all next time.